Hello everyone, back to you in day's second video. We're going to have a look at whether next week's 10 days. So day's second video, that's going to take us around the 20th of June. Uh, and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended uh, GFS and ECM ensembles, which run to around a couple of weeks. Have a look at CFSV2 for next month. That's going to take us into early July. So uh, we've got flooding rains on the way over the next few days. Some places will get over 100 millimetres of rain, over four inches of rain between now and Thursday, the uh, deluge has started, it's already underway, and it's just going to get worse over the next few hours and days. So, with release rain watch, it's been a very long time since we did uh, a rain watch at Gazovis, but we have released uh, rain watch, so have a look at that when you're finished with this video. There'll be an update coming up this evening for download and the Isle of Wight festivals. If you're tuning in because you're interested in what might happen for Glastonbury, Glastonbury video updates are going to begin on Friday. The first video update for Glasto will be on Friday evening. So not much longer to wait for that. Right, let's get on with this one then. We're going to start off central in temperature. This is crashing. This is collapsing. So the CET provisional to the 9th is now standing at 13.7, which is an anomaly of only 0.2 of a degree above average. That's provisional to yesterday. It's really cold in the Midlands at the moment. That's going to drop further for today. It'll drop further over the next few days. So very shortly, this is going to go colder than average. And I think the first half of June is going to come out below average. We'll then wait and see where things go in the second half of the month. But certainly for the first half of June, I think we're looking at a below average CT and anomaly. So uh, that's really dropped very, very quickly from where it was on the 1st. I think on the 1st of June, it was up in the 17s. So that's come down a lot in the past uh, week or so. A real crash. Um, and uh, it's got further to fall over the next few days. Uh, these are the... Uh, the um, 500 millibar height anomaly flow charts from the Penn State University for the next week to 10 days. We've got the ECMWF on the top and the GFS, which we'll have a look in a moment, is on the bottom. 500 millibars, 85 feet, is an area in the absolute high pressure, low pressure are being moved around by the jet stream. Red and orange, that's extrapolates to high pressure, blue to low pressure. These are the mean flow charts for the week to 10 day time frame, which takes us to around the 20th of June. So the ECMWF is uh, building up this ridge to our east. Quite a big ridge of high High pressure developing across central and eastern parts of Europe. There is still some low pressure in the Atlantic, but the progress of this low is being blocked to some degree. And the jet stream is going northwards with that as well. So the ECM is starting to break us out of this unsettled spell, starting to turn us drier and warmer as we go into the third week of uh, June. So we're going to get beyond the middle of the month, but as we get beyond the middle of the month, the ECM is trying to take us into something a little bit drier and warmer with winds turning into the south. Not so the GFS though, look at the GFS, uh, rather different. It does still have that build of high pressure to the east, but it's further east, kind of like uh, towards the Black Sea and the far east of Europe, which leaves us with this low pressure in the Atlantic. Also more of a northern blocking signal as well, high pressure up there around Greenland, whereas the GFS, does, the ECM I should say, doesn't really show that high pressure around Greenland as much. So there's more of a northern, northern blocking signal. Uh, with the uh, GFS has more high pressure around Greenland. It's got low pressure in the Atlantic. The high pressure across Eastern Europe is further away from us. And the upshot is, even up to day 10, the GFS is unsettled, maybe even very unsettled. It's a little bit more Atlantic driven than the way we've got at the moment. So we probably won't be talking about flooding rains. Um, but uh, it's still unsettled. It's still westerly. It's still Atlantic driven. So... Um, keeping things up unsettled up to date with the GFS, whereas the ECM definitely implying that we go into something drier and warmer in the second half of the month. So there is a split today between the GFS and the ECM output. 
Now, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Let's go to this one at Coventry today. Someone's asked me to have a look at Coventry for this part of the video. If you'd, if you'd like to have your local town or city featured in this section of the video, then just um, let us know through the comments at uh, GazWebits or uh, you can email GazWebits gmail.com. There are various ways you can let us know uh, where you'd like to see featured, and we're always happy to do that. So, upper air temperatures for Coventry for the next couple of weeks looking rather cool really temperatures below average uh certainly dates on the bottom of the chart so certainly going into the second half of the month uh that's kind of like uh 17th 18th of june just there and up to that point it's looking pretty cool late on there is a bit of a warming trend it's quite modest but maybe signs of things ticking up a little bit as we get into the final week of June. But of course, that's really extended rain stuff. So it's uh, it's in the unreliable time frame. Up to then, it's looking generally cool. Certainly not really any better than average. But precipitation-wise, much more dramatic. Look at these rainfall spikes that we've got coming up. An absolute deluge coming up for the Midlands over the next few days. So this is the rain that we've got coming up today, tonight, and into tomorrow. It does go a little bit drier through the course of tomorrow for a time but then look about another real deluge from Wednesday to Thursday absolutely soaking rains a uh, long long time since we've seen the ensembles looking as wet as this um, and right at the beginning of the ensemble as well so in the most, most in the most reliable time frame and um, beyond that just unsettled look plenty of precipitation spikes carry on going through no real drying trend yes it's not as wet as it is in the next few days, but certainly no sign of anything drier there uh, within the GFS ensembles. So we can see that within the GFS ensembles, the idea to keep things unsettled, certainly up to day 10, is quite well supported. But we know that the ECM is going to something drier. More on that later. Temperature anomalies from the 10th to the 18th of June coming out below average. It's a cool of an average week for the UK and for Ina, for most parts of Western Europe as well. So that's why I say the CET has got a lot further to fall. And look at the precipitation anomaly. So looking really, really wet for parts of England and Wales. We're talking about precipitation anomalies up to 400% of average in the next uh, week from the 10th to the 18th of June. Most of that falling in uh, the next uh, three days or so. So obviously there is potential for flooding here uh, with uh, such an amount of precipitation falling over a relatively short space of time. Very, very wet from the 10th to the 18th of June. That's how the GFS is looking for Thursday. So on Thursday, we're finally starting to get rid of this low pressure. It's going to bring all of this wet weather. There it is in the North Sea, starting to move away from us. And uh, wind's going into a cool northerly. So um, we'll lose the persistent rain, but it will still be quite showery and it will still be cool. Into next weekend, or into weekend, low pressure is continuing to move in, this time from the Atlantic. So we're not talking about um, exceptionally wet weather, but more unsettled conditions, showers or longer spells of rain. And it won't help that the rain will be falling on top of the wet weather that we've had over the past few days. Uh, into the start of next week. So, yes, we do get a little bit of a build of pressure early next week. This is Monday, the 17th of June, a week away, just building up a bit of high pressure. But uh, it's very flimsy, and it's not long at all before low pressure starting to ease back in from the Atlantic. It does look a bit drier for the south, I have to say. There is a little bit of an extension from the Azores High into southern England up to the middle of next week. Always most unsettled with this in the north and west. But eventually, this low pressure breaks through for all of us. We've gone beyond day 10 now, but it is looking unsettled with the uh, GFS until the very end, which takes us to the 26th of June. And then we start to get a bit of a, a proper ridge building up from the southwest. So right at the very end of the GFS operation run, Wednesday, 26th of June, it is turning a little bit drier and warmer then with pat size at the Azores High is beginning to make its move. This is the GFS parallel run. Again, looking at showers or longer spells of rain on Thursday as that low pressure moves when these showery conditions continue into the weekend as well. Early next week, more of a build of pressure with the parallel GFS run 
compared to the operational. So this is definitely settling things down a little bit next week and temperatures will be warming back up towards average. It's nothing to get overly excited about, but certainly a much drier and warmer week next week on the GFS parallel run compared to the GFS operational run. That's how we look at day 10, which is Thursday, 20th of June. And we have got quite a nice little ridge across the country. So again, it's nothing overly hot. It's nothing particularly warm, but it is probably taking temperatures back towards average and there will be a lot of dry weather on off with that as well. So it will be starting to dry out after this week's deluge. In the more extended range of the parallel GFS, low pressure begins to move back in from off the Atlantic. So we're going back to quite a set of conditions for a while. Although by the end of the um, parallel run, again, perhaps signs that pressure starting to re-establish, high pressure starting to re-establish close to the country, possibly getting a little bit drier and warmer there as we get towards the end of the GFS uh, parallel run, which is to Wednesday. 26th of June. Could be a few hints here that things are starting to settle down a bit in the second half of uh, June. This is how the ECMWF looks. So again, very unsettled on Thursday. Uh, low pressure keeps close to the country. We lose the flooding rains, but it will still be unsettled with showery conditions into the weekend. But early next week, here comes that ridge of high pressure starting to develop to the south. So this is turning things drier and warmer for England and Wales. Still quite unsettled out to west of Scotland at this point. But then making more of this high pressure as we get to day 10, look at that. It looks much more settled at day 10 compared to the GFS. And we saw it on the um, Penn State University charts, the 500 bit of our height and obviously for Penn State University by day 10, we are under a proper area of high pressure at 1,025 millibars, and it's very warm too. The winds are coming in from the southeast, so that really is all changed. We're going to be up rare temperatures for next week. We've got the 10 Celsius isotherm uh, on Thursday, 20th of June, across much of the country. 15 Celsius isotherm getting quite close to southern England. That could be lifting temperatures mid to high 20s, can you believe? So into the 80s Fahrenheit there with the ECM at uh, day 10. Really massive change compared to the weather that we've got this week. So signs of summer actually getting underway next week on the ECM. We know the GFS is nowhere near as bullish with that area of high pressure though next week. So a lot of uncertainty about next week. Within the ECM ensembles though, that idea appears to be quite well supported. So this is how ECM ensembles are looking for the 20th of June. Uh, the option that we have on town, it's only one of them, 51 out of 51, 100% of ECM ensembles going for this, including the control and the operational run, the operational run is the run we're just looking at, with above average heights, high pressures from the Icelandic Met Office, by the way, above average heights, high pressure sitting over just to the east of the country, low pressure is um, pushed back into the middle of the Atlantic, and so we're drawing up much, much warmer southerly, southeasterly winds, and we're under a ridge of high pressure. So this is quite a puzzle, really, what's going on here. We have got a split between the GFS and the ECM, not only between the GFS and ECM operation runs, but also between the GFS and ECM ensembles. Because the GFS ensembles are looking, along with the GFS operation run, looking unsettled and cool, although the parallel run perhaps hints at things getting a little bit drier and warmer next week. But the ECM and its ensemble so it's very bullish about high pressure building over into the east and turning much drier and potentially a lot warmer next week as well. So this is a real puzzle what's going on here. And as we get to two weeks away, which is the 25th of June, heading up toward Glastonbury, of course, we've got still this area of above average height sitting over to the east of the country. So again, this will be really warm, maybe hot by this point, hot conditions uh, with southerly winds and dry weather. Again, there's no sign of that at the moment within the GFS ensemble. So it really is a case of uh, which one do we believe. Maybe we will finish up with a blend of the two. That is often what happens. So perhaps it will settle down uh, somewhat next week. We'll get a bit warmer next week, but not going as far as the ECM and its ensembles are showing. That will kind of bring us in line with what the GFS parallel run is showing for next week, I suppose. 
Uh, finally, CFS V2, and uh, these are 500 mm heights broken down into weekly periods. The first week period takes us from the 10th to the 16th of June. The uh, coming week, with a strong blocking area of high pressure to the north around Greenland and Iceland, trough of low pressure over into the south of the UK. So we know what's going to happen in the week ahead. We're going to have a deluge in the next few days, and uh, it's going to be very, very cool as well. Week 2 looks like that. It's the 17th to the 23rd of June with below average heights to the west southwest of the country. So this is still unsettled. Showers or longer spells of rain. Still quite a strong northern blocking signal as well. Temperatures likely to be cool. Big change in week three, though. This is the 24th to the 30th of June. A big area of above average heights then builds to our east. That will be much drier and hotter. Winds are going into an east south east direction. That's summer in the final week of June. And then we go through to week four, which is the 1st to the 7th of July, with the above average heights then kind of like drifting a little bit further south, but probably still bringing a fair amount of dry and warm weather. Winds a little bit more westerly, could be a bit more unsettled for the north. But overall, that week four anomaly doesn't look too bad either. There will probably be quite a lot of dry fairly warm weather with that temperature anomalies in the week have very very substantially below average talking about anomalies of like two to three degrees uh below average so really cool actually feeling unusually cold uh under the persistent rain notice most of north america also very cool to cold with temperature anomalies in the week ahead Week 2 is also cooler than average. This is the 17th to 23rd of June. Below average temperature there. Not by as much as in week 1, but nevertheless still below average then. Uh, week 3, however, goes warmer. This is as high pressure builds to our east. So summer returning from the 24th to the 30th of June. The last week of June goes a lot warmer. Maybe even a little bit hot. And then we go through to week 4, which is cooling back close to average then. So we don't maintain that heat for very long. We go back to um, close to average temperatures through the, through the first week of July. Precipitation-wise, uh, proper north-south split in the week ahead from the 10th to 16th of June. A bit drier than average in Northern Bath, Scotland, substantially wetter than average for England and Wales. Week 2, which is the 17th to the 23rd of June, is also looking quite unsettled. Average to above average rainfall there. Close to average rainfall in week 3, the 24th to the 30th of June. This is that hotter week. I would suspect that will be a drier week too. And uh, week 4, 1st to the 7th of, June, uh, 1st to 7th of July, sorry. First week of July, also looking rather drier. So there are a few hints of a change here. Uh, it's uncertain how quickly that's going to happen. Uh, the East Shemdegraf wants to have us into proper summer weather as soon as sort of um, days 8, 9 and 10. The GFS, uh, a little bit delayed with that, maybe hinting at that through the, first, uh, through the um, final week of June, along with the CFS as well. So the ECM looks like it's a bit quick in trying to get us into these summer-like conditions, but there are hints that uh, changes could be on the way for the second half of June. So if you don't like cold, wet summer weather, you might not have too long to wait. Uh, until you get something drier and warmer. Certainly by sort of the last week of June, there are quite a few hints here that we're going to see something drier and warmer. But of course, any forecast beyond sort of um, a week away is going to be unreliable. So do, uh, do um, make note of that, that this is all unreliable uh, speculation, really. Right, so that's it uh, for your second video update for today. We shall be back later on with that update for download and also for the Isle of Wight Festival. But uh, don't forget to check out Rainwatch. It's going to be a deluge over the next few days. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.